when, when we're talking about the I am statements in John, when Jesus is saying that I am, when he says that I am the bread of life or I am the light of the world, he's not just saying that he's those things. He's connecting himself to that event. He's connecting himself to that moment in the burning bush that sent Moses to save his people. And Jesus is almost like a new Moses now, an even better Moses that is going to save God's people once again, but not just God's people, but all of God's people, right? All of us here, all the Gentiles in the room. Like that's, the, he is saving that. So we've, we've discussed this in a lot of time. We're on resurrection and life today, but we, we discussed how Jesus is the bread of life. That he says, stop looking for signs. Stop grumbling after bread. He goes, I am the bread. I, I am with you always, basically, is what he's saying. Then he says, I am the light of the world that many times we think the darkness is winning. It's not. The light shines in the darkness even if it's small. And then we talked about how Jesus says, I am the gate. And many times we think that we have to choose the gate. That we have to choose, you know, like this side and we get the good things. If we get the bad one, we get the bad ones if we choose the bad gate, right? And Jesus says, no, I am the gate. And what it means is the gate is a person. The gate is the shepherd. He protects his sheep, which is beautiful for us. And then last week we talked about Jesus being the good shepherd. But it wasn't just the good shepherd. What was it? It was the good shepherd. Yeah, that's right. I mean, good doesn't mean just the absence of, of evil. Good means the beginning of beautiful, that he is our beautiful shepherd. And he's beautiful because he takes a scrubby old blind man and gives him sight and makes him beautiful. And he takes our scrubbiness and makes it beautiful as well. He's a beautiful shepherd because he makes us beautiful. And today, we're talking about the resurrection and the life and what he means by that. And we're still, I, we're still kind of talking about the blind man. I know we've been talking about the blind man for like three weeks, but it mentions it here. But we're not going to explicitly talk about all of this. We're talking about the resurrection and the life, and it's the story of Lazarus. And the story of Lazarus is pivotal in the book of John. Like it's pivotal because it's showing us who, who and what Jesus does, right? That he is the razor. He's the resurrection and the life. Now, what do we usually think of when we think of resurrection and the life, right? We're like, well, yeah, you know, it's like, I choose Jesus and, you know, that he's, he's, you know, this, this great, like person, right? And, and that, uh, you know, this is what I believe. I believe that Jesus is the resurrection, that when I die, that I will go and be with him. That on the last day, I will be raised with him along with all my loved ones, my wife, my dad, my, even maybe my little dog, Miffy, will end up being risen in the last days, right? And Jesus is the resurrection. And because of that, they'll be fine. You know, this is what I believe. I just need to trust in him. In the future, we'll all be at the pearly gates together, right? This is kind of how we usually treat it, right? But what I love, and the reason why I wanted to show you that video clip of, 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 that, of the Gospel of John there is because Jesus turns that idea on its head a bit. He turns it around and he makes that statement of resurrection and life mean something more than just looking for the future. And it means that it's looking for today. And that is what we're talking about. To get there, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta talk about the story around it a little bit. <coughs> now, Martha, it's great having you here today. I'm gonna say your name a lot. <laughs> and that, that's because the story is about Mary and Martha. Because so Jesus is hanging out and, and he's, and he's yeah, pretty far away from his friend Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And he's, he's over there and he gets word that his friend Lazarus is sick. And Jesus is already like, this isn't going to end well for Lazarus, right? But he doesn't go right away. And then all of a sudden he gets a, uh, a he, he's told that, he's like, all right, let's start heading there. And when he starts heading there, he finds out that Lazarus is indeed dead. All right. And so he travels there and it takes him four days to get to Lazarus, who's in the tomb. Lazarus has been dead for four days. Now, all of us, including me, 
always just skip past that. I was like, that's a weird little number. But when something is specifically standing out like that, you need to pay attention to it. So that's important. It sticks out. And the reason why is that the common teaching of the day was that someone's spirit hung around their body for three days. And after the third day, the spirit left, right? Now, the cynical side of me says, well, this is something that was common just in, because sometimes people would kind of slip into, slip into comas and they thought they would d- die. And then, and then they would, you know, they would check on them after three days because then they were actually dead or, or you might have an alive guy on your thing. But, that, that's, but they believe that the spirit hung around them for three days. So what, what John is saying here is Lazarus was dead. That's what he's saying. He's saying unequivocally that Lazarus is dead. And Martha and Mary, they did what, what normal people did. They would hire professional mourners. You guys have heard me talk about this before. They, they've hired professional mourners who would play loud instruments and flutes, basically to help the whole family mourn. But it was almost when someone would die, it was almost like a circus was in town. And it would, it would be really loud that first week, and it would kind of trail off. All right, so all these mourners are going on. Just imagine the scene, the chaotic scene of all these people playing instruments and mourning and wailing loudly, and they're doing it because they're paid, right? But that's to kind of hide the family's insecurity about grieving. And, and there, all this stuff, and Jesus walks into that chaos. He comes rolling into, into town, right? And people are banging things and mourning loudly and all that stuff, and he comes in. And Martha comes running up to him, and she's angry. Now, when I was growing up, no one in the Bible got angry except for the Pharisees and the baddies, right? Like, no, no, no one got angry except for those, those folks. And, and now that I've been studying it more, and all that, it's, I, I see that it's, it's something else going on. So other people get angry, and Martha is hot. Like, she's angry at Jesus, And she comes running up to Jesus, and she comes running up to him, and notice what she asks him. Lord, if you, if if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. Like, that's, that's pretty accusatory, isn't it? It's like, we know what you can do. You've made bread appear out of five loaves and two fish, and you feed thousands of people. We know what you can do. You healed this blind man. We know what you can do. And if you had only been here, if you had just been here, Jesus, if only you had been here, none of this stuff would have happened. It would have been fine, Jesus. And and the thing is, is Jesus says to her, this is when he says, you know, I'm the resurrection and the life. And we'll get to that here in a second and what, the, what he's saying with that. But she, she kind of almost passes it off. Like she goes, yeah, yeah, I know that you're the resurrection and the life. Listen, I know that we will raise again on the resurrection on the last day. She goes, yeah, I get it, Jesus. But if, if only you had been here, he would have been fine. And notice something here. Everything Martha believes is correct. But she's missing what Jesus is saying to her. Everything is correct that she believes, but she's missing what Jesus is actually saying to her. She's living in the pain of the if onlys of life. If only you had been here. So for you, let's talk about, let's talk about the, your if-onlys. Do any of you have any if-onlys in this life that are bringing you pain right now? Do you have any if-onlys that you, that you are just living in, like, Mara, like Martha here? In our pain and despair, we, we, might, we might say with Martha that if only you had been here, right? But maybe yours is something like this. If only we had put my wife on that other medication should be alive today. Anyone have any if onlys like that? If only we didn't go out and drive that night, we wouldn't have gotten hit by that drunk driver. If only I didn't have that craving for ice cream, that wouldn't have happened. You know, if, if only, 
If only I had done this. If only I'd gone to school and done more college or studied more, then I would have a better job than I have right now and I wouldn't be struggling in debt anymore. Maybe I would actually have a job that I enjoy that doesn't suck the life out of me every day when I go there. If only I had done that. If Maybe for many of you in the room, if only I had actually saved more for retirement, I could go on more than one cruise every 20 years. Right? Like that's if only. And we if, if, we, if only ourselves to death. We, we if only... If only I had done a better job. If only I'd been surrounded by better people. If only Jesus had actually done this in my life, I would be so much better. Do you see that? Do you see the despair that it brings? The the despair. And I have to tell you that when I was growing up, my faith life was filled with if onlys. If, if only I could do more for Jesus, then I'd be all right, right? If only I could get, make this happen in my life, I'd be so much better. You know, if only, if only I gave God more money, then he would have blessed me. You know, if, if only, if only, if only, and it just leads to despair. It's not faith in Jesus, it's faith in how we see things. If only. And this is where Jesus moves Martha's statement from if only to if Jesus. Because she goes, if only you had been here. And he said to her, Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet yet he will live. I I went into King James there for a second. Did you hear that? (laughs) I never do that. That was weird. Because I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he died, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And that's when she said, yeah, of course. I believe that you'll raise everyone on the end, at the end. I, yeah, of course I believe that, Jesus. He, she, she doesn't hear what he's saying. In many, in many of us, including me, just a few years ago, believed in this if only if only jesus could save me then yeah he will save me in the future he will save me for for when we go into heaven's realms and all that stuff and our faith becomes this faith of if only and it's for the future but my faith doesn't mean a thing for me right now it doesn't deal with my suffering right now it doesn't deal with my neighbor's suffering right now And Jesus is saying, if I am really the resurrection and the life, if I really did die and I really did rise again, it's not something for the future, but it's something for right now in each of our lives. He moves her from if only to if Jesus. Because if Jesus did indeed rise from the dead, if He did indeed die on the cross and rise from the dead, it means everything for us right now. And I, and I, I don't know how to explain this very well to you. But this is something, we're talking six, six years ago. This idea right here, moving past if only in our lives to if Jesus, was a light bulb that went off in my, in my life. Because my entire faith was wrapped up in the grand retirement in the sky. That at some day I will be in glory with Jesus if only I do the right things. Believe the right things, right? Yeah, right? (laughs) Like that's, that's, you know, if if I do all that. And then I can't remember, I can't remember what I was reading or what scriptures, but all of a sudden I was like, But if Jesus actually rose from the dead, if he actually died, if he actually rose from the dead, if we actually believe the Spirit of God came to us at Pentecost, if we actually believe that there are full forgiveness of sins, if we actually believe this stuff, 
then that means today I'm fine. I'm fine. And you're fine. That you are forgiven, that you are loved. That you no longer have to work to save yourself. You don't have to worry about the if-onlys of your life. You don't have to worry about, well, if, if only I would come to more Bible studies. Which you should come to my Thursday one. It's super fun. <laughs> but it, you know, if only I gave more. If only I did all that stuff. You don't have to worry about that because we're, I think we if only ourselves because we're worried that we're on this knife edge with God. That if we don't, we have to figure out how much we need to do in order to get the good stuff, right? But if Jesus actually died, rose again, sent a spirit, and has said to all of you that you are forgiven, you're fine. You're fine. He loves you. I've, I've been talking with so many people when they realize this. And you can almost physically see... <laughs> It's, I know, it makes me sad too. It does. They, uh, but it's amazing when people actually sense this. She fell. <laughs> they, um, but sh- when people actually hear this for the first time and the weight comes off and they go, I'm fine. I don't have to worry about saving myself anymore. I'm all right. And so when I think about Jesus being the resurrection and the life, I, I picture pictures like this with this child with a jet pack for pretending a box is, is a rocket or something like that, right? Because it's living in today. Because if Jesus came and rise and I'm fine, I'm forgiven, that means I can go over to my neighbor and I can just love them. I can show them acts of kindness. I can show them love. I can show them hope because I know that I'm all right. I don't have to save myself anymore. I know I'm fine. And I can go over to them and give them the love that God has given me. And maybe give them a glimmer of hope that today can be a new day. That today can be a day that is filled with resurrection and life. It's good news. It's good news. So let's end with a, little, with a little blessing here. May Jesus, our resurrection and life, come into our midst of your if-onlys, into the midst of our sorrows, into the midst of our pain, in the darkness and even in, even in those times that are good. May he come into all of those because he is with you now. May you have faith to see that his power is made perfect in your weakness right now that he is causing the blind to see and the darkness to turn to light, not just at the end, but now, because he is your resurrection and life right now. Be blessed. Amen. Amen.